not anybody else. Good. <laughs> and wow. I'd like to sing verses 1, 3, and 5 because you can't sing this without their singing the fifth verse because uh, that's what it's all about. Because the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, isn't it? But I, I always think of this song in this season of the year right before we get to Christmas music. And uh, so let's uh, start with this and then we'll have a opening prayer. And uh, John and Cosette are out of town this weekend. You may have guessed that by now. <laughs> so he asked me to leave. <coughs>
to get that in our potluck for people to share their their thanksgiving and praise to the Lord. But just be think, thinking about those things, and uh, so that you're you're prepared and you can you can share if you're inspired to do that at our potluck time. So then also today I chosen a book of the Bible that we can read. We read a song, so now the next thing we need to do is, is read a whole book. <laughs> and, and what I want to do is we'll read this book, then we'll have some discussion time, and then this thing is set so that it'll buzz <laughs> at 9.35. It's not supposed to like make big loud noises and disrupt <laughs> us, but at about 10 minutes before our class is over, I would like to just move to a time of prayer where we can pray for our families, pray for our nation, pray for those things that you're led to pray for. And, and instead of having a lot of time expressing requests, if you have things that you're comfortable naming names, then name names. If you don't, then, then pray out loud for those things too. And that's what we'll do for the last 10 minutes of class. And then, about 9.45 and close. So, so that's what we're going to do. So the book um, that I chose for this morning, and I pray the Lord's blessing upon that, is the book of Jude. And the book of Jude is right before the book of Revelation. And one of the reasons I chose the book of Jude is that I hear our brother Al over here all the time when we're having a class. He referred to the book of Jude, and I thought, you know, I think I even said it out loud to somebody. I represented to them, I'm going to read the book of Jude this week. So I've read through this a couple of times. It's 25 verses in its entirety, and I don't know, I'm going to sit down here. And what's interesting to me about the book of Jude is that it appears right before the book of Revelation. And so one of my one of the things that I ponder in my mind is is this our is this sort of our instructions um, because one of the acronyms for the for the Bible B I B L E have you ever heard this one is basic instructions before leaving Earth <laughs> Bible mm -hmm. and I think Jude fits even more in that category as uh, you know as we see all of the craziness taking place in our world and um, I think that in from the church pulpit and, and maybe from the Sunday school class we need to address those things once in a while but rather than do anything like that today this kind of gives us the general idea and you can sort of draw your own conclusions. And as I was reading this this morning, it, I was halfway wishing that we could take four or five Sundays <laughs> to, to discuss each um, section in the book of Jude. It, it is 25 verses, so it's easy to read in about five minutes, I think. And then um, I would like your reflections on it, and, and perhaps I'll give a few of my own, too. So, so... Without further ado, then, <clears throat> Jude, the book of Jude. Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to those who are called, sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ. Mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who turned the grace of our God into lewdness and denied the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe, and the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. 
as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. Yet Michael the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling, a reviling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuked you. But these speak evil of whatever they do not know, and whatever they know naturally, like brute beasts, in these things they corrupt themselves. Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, have run greedily in the error of Balaam, for profit, and perished in the rebellion of Korah. These are spots in your love feast, while they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves. They are clouds without water, carried about by the wind, late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, pulled up by their roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming up their own shame, wandering stars for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men also, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who have who cause divisions not having the spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hate hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God our Father, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. 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 And may the Lord bless the reading of his word this morning. Uh, I, it's always with trepidation, sometimes with trepidation that I choose a passage like this to read, read because um, truly this one uh, book in the Bible, 25 verses, is like the two-edged sword, which we were talking about last week, the Word of God, because it divides the, the bones and the marrow, the righteous from the unrighteous. So there's messages for righteous people here. It's all for righteous people. But it gives us a lens by which we can observe the world around us, doesn't it? <laughs> um, because when we look at, at what this is talking about, it, uh, we see exactly... I mean, if we think about what's taking place in our world right now, and it's out in the public forum, uh, what can I say? It's all around us. And but it, but also this book gives us some specific instructions, and I think one of those, probably the most important, starts at verse twenty. Yeah? I like to work backwards from the end. <laughs> but you, beloved building yourselves up on your 
the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And then as we encounter sinners and these people, it says, and on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by flesh. So that's one instruction. One example that he gives us, which is important to me, um, is uh, starting at verse 8, that paragraph. Um, when we see this defilement taking place around us, we need to be really, I think, at the end of the chapter, the, the book, I want to say chapter, but really book, God is telling us to but save some, on some have, um, how does that say, on some have compassion. So we need to pray that God would give us a heart of compassion and that he would lead us to choose the battles that we would choose. Because even Michael the archangel, I'm looking at verse 9, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke you. So, when I get to a spot where I rebuke somebody that is out there acting wickedly, and maybe they deserve to be rebuked, it's much more powerful to let the Lord rebuke them. Because if, if somebody's got a fight with me, I'm pretty easy to defeat. But if they're going to fight with the Lord God Almighty, they've got another thing coming. Yeah, but if you put that in light of what you just said in verse 23, pulling them out of the fire, that'd be like pulling, some, you know, you see somebody walking off a cliff or into a uh, car, you just reach out and grab them. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, with those both in contrast, you know, let the Lord help you preach to other people, I'm not sure the word preach, but yeah. you know, witness to the other people and use strong language. Because maybe that strong language, like pulling them out of a fire, is what's going to get them. But you get all these wishy-washy people, you know, well, the Lord may have said this, so you might want to think about that. Yeah, I you know, it's like the Lord definitely says these things, right? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I mean, there are so many places I would love to go because uh, some of the topics that are raised here, it's like it talks, here we learn about Enoch, who was one of the patriarchs of Noah, who was and then was not because the Lord took him to heaven for fellowship with them. He's one of the people that I've nominated to be one of the two witnesses in the book of Revelation. I don't know, but... Uh, I was, I just, yeah, that topic is kind of a side topic, but that's what I was thinking of because it says to consider the body of Moses, and and the Bible says you're appointed once to death and then the judgment. And so I'm thinking everybody dies once, so Moses would have to die twice if he was going to be one of the witnesses. Yeah, I'm thinking more of Enoch, though. Right, I know, but yeah. Enoch never died, so Enoch and Elijah never died. Yeah, so those are my candidates. <laughs> and I don't know if that's the way God works because as we're raptured um, into heaven um, it may be that we never truly experience death ourselves and um, I would look to uh, Luke. To Luke anyway I need to get actually I could look it right up in here from something else that I had prepared um, well, if you when, think about it, in, uh, in Adam, all died. Yeah. yeah. And so when we accept Christ, we put to death the sinful man. But the other thing that Jesus said to Martha, when right before he called Lazarus forth from the dead, he said to Martha, he that believes in me never dies. Right. And so... Yeah, and so we're immune from this first death and the second death. And maybe we are. I, I mean, now we're getting into doctrine. You can see why maybe we need to spend four or five weeks in this book. 
curious to see what comments now have for us. We're putting him on the spot. He's busy. <laughs> He's busy. Her back. Jonathan, what did you just say? We're immune from the first and the second death? Well, no, we're not necessarily immune, but I, I believe that when Jesus says, he that believes in me never dies, I think that when we go to that experience of passing from this life to the next one, that perhaps, <laughs> I, it's a mystery, but... I think what you might be trying to say is it holds no victory over us. Yeah, yeah, and so <clears throat> maybe we're immune from the fear of that. We should be. Um, yeah. But uh, it's not going to be fun. <laughs> I don't think it's. <laughs> and with somebody was asking me about my fake knee <laughs> this morning, and you know, talking about that and maybe <clears throat> complaining a little bit that it's not like I had hoped that I would be like I was when I was 40 years old <laughs> with this post-surgery thing. But I am looking forward to that perfection that I'll experience on the day when. I'm raptured again, Amen. and perhaps leave leave these parts behind. Right? <laughs> Maybe they flop right out, and they're left on the ground wherever I am. Well, you when, know, as you get older, you think more about death, and um, death becomes not so scary as you age because you do have all these body parts that are failing, and your vision's failing. Your your loved ones have already gone on to heaven. You're alone. Uh, you know, death is not just a bad thing as you age and are alone. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was just reading in Psalms this week, too, um, that it's not something to be feared, but it's not maybe something to be embraced. But in the Psalms, one of, <laughs> and I can't tell you which one it is, but I should have circled it when I read it. It says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his love of his saints. So that's something that's precious to the Lord as well. And that's something that is his property, something that's his, uh, he has the authority, and he's the one that chooses when our life here ends, and not us. So We're just going home to be with him. That's right. It's like when our kids come to visit us, how thrilled we are and excited and you know, God's the same way when he brings us home. Yeah. Yeah. Well, isn't this a good uh, passage to discuss? <laughs> and it, I think that, um, and then this other instruction, let's move back to verse 3. Contend for the faith is the, the heading. It says, Beloved, while I was very diligent, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation. I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out to this condemnation, ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's not as if we can sit back and relax and, and let God do the battle, I think we need to participate with him in the battle, and whatever he has us to be doing, we need to do that. And that contending for the faith, can, I think it should always start with prayer, that, that when we see a situation, we need to be in prayer about it. And then when we see a situation that needs to be confronted, we need to be willing to confront um, those situations. And conf confrontation for me, that was one of the things that was very difficult for me in my days as a school teacher is that teaching junior high children, um, there were hourly confrontations. <laughs> and, Confrontation is unpleasant, and I think that we have to give our hat, you know, take our hat off to righteous school teachers that are willing to correct behavior. I mean, there's a lot of time spent in correcting behavior, 
and confrontation from you. <laughs> because uh, as a parent or as a teacher, confrontation is never pleasant. It's never convenient. But there is the right time to confront somebody. And that time for confrontation is when you realize that you need to confront them. Ow. Well, the Bible tells us that it, we have the Holy Spirit as believers. And, and the Bible tells us that we should always be ready to give an answer of the hope that is within us. And I think this is what we need to be. We need to be alert to listen to the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and hear him when he speaks to us and when we are to give a reason of the hope. That's standing, that is defending the faith. And that is standing for the, the truth. The first Peter 3.15, okay. right? And, and then the, the phrase that follows that is, yet with gentleness and with, respect. Yes, yes. So, oh, um, telling and, the truth in love. Yeah, and so when we confront someone, Sometimes we're called on by the Lord to do that, and may be different than because that's being ready when we're asked about the faith that lies within us. Sometimes we just need to tell about the faith that lies within us. But I think that principle of gentleness and respect, as long as we can be respectful and say, this is something that's greatly concerning me. I mean, there's good ways to confront and bad ways to confront. So, I'm, yeah. But I think sometimes... It's just a matter of we need to, uh, and there's people that maybe we just need to say the Lord rebuke you. <laughs> and we're really taking a pretty lofty position when we're comparing ourselves to Michael the Archangel to say that. But I think if we can build ourselves up in our most holy faith and pray according to the Holy Spirit and be ready then if the Lord would choose us to put us in that type of situation, then I think that would happen, and it wouldn't necessarily be us, but the Lord speaking through us in that situation. And I think another really good uh, cross-reference to this would be Ephesians chapter 6, where Paul instructs us to put on the whole armor of God. And one of the things that I get out of, I mean, I'm really moving around a little bit, but in Ephesians chapter 6, I think one of the important principles for being a soldier of the cross and battling against principalities and powers and spiritual enemies in dark places is that we need to continually hide ourselves within the Lord Jesus Christ and allow him to be the one that shines forth from our lives. Um, yes? What do you mean when you say confront? Confront? I mean, when we see something wrong, we need to be out there and be saying, this is wrong. <laughs> this is... You mean spiritually against the Bible wrong? Oh, when you see something spiritually against the Bible wrong. I, I think we need to take those same principles that Jesus laid down. If you have anything, I mean, and it, it can be something that's spiritually against the Bible wrong, or it can be something that has offended you. If it's a brother or sister, you need to go to them and say, what about this? This is something that I see that, that I disagree with. And then, um, and then come to an agreement on how the scripture is interpreted. The, the word needs to be rightly divided. And then, and then, if you can come to an agreement, fine. If not, then it maybe needs to go to the next step, to two or three people. If you see that, go to two or three people, see if they agree with you, see if, and, and just figure out. But I think one of the principles we always need to have is humility. We need to be willing to change our viewpoint. But we need to be willing to also um, speak the Lord's word and be prayerful about it when we go to do that. Is that anybody get other comments on that? When you change your viewpoint, you have to make sure when you change it, it's logically and spiritually changed according to the Bible. Yes. If you're wrong. Yeah. But if you're right, you don't change your viewpoint. That's right. That's 
and I think uh, it goes to the book of Timothy, where Paul is instructing Timothy to rightly divide the yeah. word of truth, which means to rightly interpret the word of truth. Wow, this is a really good discussion. <laughs> We've got about three or four minutes. Yes, I want to take kind of neat if I may. Yes. You talk about humility there, and I just like to point out how you, how much humility that Jude had, because Jude, he says he's the servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James. Well, who does James refer him to himself as? The brother of of Jesus. So why doesn't Jude refer to himself as the brother, brother of Jesus? Christ. You know, I just find find it fascinating how yeah. he didn't even consider himself worthy enough to say, I'm the brother of Jesus. Yeah. And I think um, when you think about that and what Jude is instructing too, um, a lot of times are one of the things that Jesus so we're getting back into the, the prophecy aspect of this. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus instructed people that if you see someone and they say, Behold, here is the Christ. Behold, there is the Christ. Jesus specifically instructed us, and he said it twice, Do not believe them. Why did he say that? He said that, I believe Here's what I believe about that. He said that because when you find a false teacher saying, well, I encountered the Lord Jesus, and he told me this, and you should believe it. Well, we love, we who have the Holy Spirit in us, and we love the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. If we're not careful, we're going to give the authority to that false prophet that he's borrowing from the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Jude... I think it's in his humility, even though he's the brother, the half-brother of the Lord Jesus, which I read that kind of in the background that I have in this Bible, um, he's just pointing these things out as a teacher in the church, I believe. In Matthew and Mark, I believe, is where they lay out his ways. Yeah, yeah. It's 9.35, um, and so there he is comments that we could close with this morning? Well, I think the main lesson that I get from our discussion this morning is that we need to realize as believers that we are children of God. We're purchased in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're no longer our own. We have the Holy Spirit. And now we are to live in the Spirit and be ready always to give an answer with humility telling the truth in love, but we are the ambassadors. We are representatives of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we have to be intentional because the world leads us. We're busy, and we can be too busy to pay attention to the Holy Spirit. But we need to be intentional because we live in the last days. There's lots of distractions. There's lots of things that can occupy our thoughts and our you know, if we look at the world and we didn't have the hope of the Lord's re appearing, you know, looking for, when were we, and that's what I'm referring to a lot of times in Titus 2.13, we are to be looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing, but in the meantime, we are to be always attentive to the fact that we are ambassadors for Christ. Amen. I don't, I don't think I... I really don't have anything to add to that. <laughs> 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 um, we are to be the attendant of God. And, uh, and uh, I, I think I, what I want to do is add this book to my reading this week <laughs> so that I sort of read through it every day maybe for a week or for a month until it really, really gets into my soul and into my heart. And um, as I'm thinking about that, I think one of the things we need to do is, is focus our mental diet on God's Word and maybe less on the, the media that is constantly flooding our lives if we have electronic devices on or even 
this electronic device, mm -hmm. which has been put in our hands, and I'm not sure, I'm not so sure that this is a, a tool. I mean, it's a tool, and we need to use it and be responsible for it, just like anything else. I guess I would say it that way. But we need to be careful because this is dangerous, just as dangerous as anything else. So, so uh, for this next uh, 10 minutes, I would just like to spend some time as a Sunday school class seeking the Lord in prayer. And, um, if you would join in that and at about 9.45, either I can pay attention to the clock or you can, and, and we'll, uh, I'll close us right about 9.45, and then we'll be dismissed and get ready for church. How does that sound? <laughs> so, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done, Lord, here on earth as it is in heaven. And as, as we're Led, just pray a simple prayer. Lord, we're thankful, we're so thankful for the many blessings that you've given us. Particularly, we're thankful for the book of Jude this morning. Heavenly Father, I do thank you and praise you for your love. I do thank you, Lord, that you've given me eternal life, Lord, and that you have given your Son, Lord Jesus Christ, to give life, eternal life, to all those who have re <coughs> who receive him, Lord, and 